<laughs> so next up on this little video series we're doing looking at John Tiller series and the actual units involved. We looked at French cavalry last time and today we're going to be looking at the French guard cavalry. I would say that anybody that asked me who had the best cavalry overall of the French Napoleonic Wars, it would definitely be the French. Um, they didn't always have the best units, but overall they had pretty much the best cavalry that you could rely on. Um, they weren't necessarily the best horsemen. Um, uh, maybe Poles and Eastern Europeans can take that mantle. Um, other units uh, did better than them at times, but pound for pound, let's say, they were the best cavalry at the time. Certainly the best led and probably put to the best use by their commanders and Napoleon himself. Um, now, we get onto this guard cavalry. We had a look last time at the normal sort of line cavalry, and we get to this guard cavalry, and it really is the creme de la creme of the cavalry in the game. Look at that. These uh, gendarmes are a triple star rated. You won't have as many of them, so you've got to take care of them on the battlefield, but when you need to get stuff done, when the proverbial hits the fan, you can turn to your guard cavalry and you know, if you use them right, that you're going to get a job done and they're going to save the day. And I think a good place to start as any are with the Grenadier Cheval, a kind of unique unit that are only present in the guard. Look at them, absolutely fantastic looking cavalry. Um, ever present throughout the war, they came in sort of um, early 1800s um, and when Napoleon put out decree, he basically trained up some recruits, some elites, some cadets and then cherry picked the best of them. Um, ever present during the war, as we said, and these guys really were the epitome of big guys on big horses. Uh, nicknamed the gods or the, sometimes the giants. Um, they're extremely imposing on the battlefield. I mean, look at that. A triple star. This is Waterloo. By the time they got here, they were absolutely fantastic. They got a battle honours list longer than my arm. Um, they have big black horses and they tower in men. I mean, I think it was about five, eight, the, five, nine, the minimum uh, standard. They did reduce it slightly, but don't forget that's above minimum height for those days. I uh, wore those big bear skins and they were pretty much the elite of the elite, the elite even within the guard. Um, extremely brave, and sometimes it was just enough for them to actually show themselves on the battlefield for uh, the enemy to, to go away, be, uh, to get out of there, before they even had contact with them. Extremely well led, there was a, a very famous General Le Peak, um, and he's got a couple of good stories. At the Battle of Eylau, when the Russians were carronading uh, the guard cavalry, and he looked behind him and his troopers were sort of ducking and weaving these cannonballs. And he says, men, these are not turds. No need to duck. Um, probably a little bit misquoted, but it was words to those effect. Um, and then he got involved with a cavalry charge later on. And he actually got surrounded with his grenadier guard, uh, grenadier cheval. Um, and he turned to the Russian officer that offered him a surrender. And he said, look at the faces of my men. Do they look like ones who want to surrender? So... Yeah, absolutely fantastic. Steady cavalry, coal cavalry. You had to have 10 years service just to even be considered. And you had to get uh, four campaigns. So Grenadier, um, a cheval, not my favourite unit, but they would certainly be in my top 10. I know it's a lot of people's um, favourite unit, um, but they are superb cavalry. So happy days if you've got them on the field with you. I suppose the next up we're going to have a look at our Chevaux Leisure Lancers. Um, do look absolutely fantastic. Some of the most iconic uh, cavalry of the whole war and some of the best, to be honest. Um, a little bit like the sort of line Lancers, they weren't available or around in the early days. It wasn't until about 1807, that, uh, sort of mid-war, that Napoleon decided to actually take some of them for the Guard as well. And what we have is two regiments of Polish Lancers of the Guard and a regiment of what we call Red Lancers or Dutch Lancers. They were not as good, but they were still very, very good cavalry. But the Polish were absolutely fantastic. The best Lancers around Europe at the time. Now for me, uh, the Polish Lancers and Polish cavalry in general were some of the best horsemen in Europe. It was a tradition. Uh, and these guys are direct descendants from the, those winged hussars. You probably have seen them. Um, which strangely had lances, um, but they were called hussars, never mind. Um, and these guys were emphatically loyal, absolutely loyal to the core, to Napoleon. Um, and to that, you've got a two-star, absolutely fantastic cavalry. Against infantry, with their lancer rating, they get a bonus, especially on the charge. Um, and they've got a fantastic little story about a battle in Spain called Somosierra. And 
the Spanish were up on a hill, 12,000 of them, um, with artillery, and Napoleon turned to somebody on the day and said, oh, we really need to do something about this. It wasn't an order, it was sort of a general throwaway remark. The squadron of the day, I'll explain about that later on, was the Polish Lancers, and the officer in charge of the Polish Lancers, he decided to take it upon himself. Now, 150 against 12,000, odds stacked against him, decided to charge that hill uphill against a well-dug in Spanish uh, um, army and they came off the best they got to the top of the hill and out of the 150 i think it was only a handful i've heard three were um left uninjured um but yeah that says everything you need to know about these polish lancers absolutely fantastic emphatically loyal maximum elan on the field and anytime you see them and again on the field you're going to be happy to have them um and again they definitely be in my top 10 um of units to have on the field. And the third lot we'll look at are my personal favourite top unit of the entire Napoleonic Wars, the Empress Dragoons, the Empress Dragoons or Emperatrice Dragoons. Now I like these guys because they're just unposing. They're not as flash and flamboyant as Hussars. Um, they're not quite as big and brave, uh, or they're certainly brave, but not as, uh, let's say, large as the Grenadier a Cheval. But these guys were really the workhorses. They just did not mind getting their hands dirty, as a normal Dragoon does, but these guys just did it best. Um, the Pauline took them on um, sort of mid-war. Um, we can dismount them, um, and uh, they took on that role of the heavy cavalry. So uh, they're not any worse than any of the other guard cavalry, um, and you know the, the uniform isn't as flash. They they have a massive, uh, sorry, a very long uh, battle honours list. Um, the so-called the Empress Dragoons because they had a parade for the Empress Josephine, um, and at the time she was so impressed by them, uh, probably sort of gifted her as a, an honorary colonel um, uh, to them. Um, they came from the best of the best dragoons, so they cherry-picked the best, I think it was about 10 officers and men from each of the existing dragoon regiments. You needed six years service and had to be a veteran of four campaigns. They were going to get black horse as well, but they were nabbed for those grenadier as Um And they always, reserve, uh, as with all guard cavalry, they, they form part of the sort of a reserve cavalry on the battlefield. Very long battle list, as I said. They weren't always liked by their own units. They had a bit of trouble with some Saxon allies and things like that. But these Dragoons, they, they just didn't care. They just wanted to get on with the job. They got their hands dirty. Um, and they, they also had the, the better equipment than the, the, your usual Dragoons. So what we got here, A2 star. So again, I, I think they're my favourite. Just because of the fact that they're so unimposing. That they don't give a, a rat's proverbial what they look like they just get on with the job as a normal dragoon but these guys do it better than anyone and i've as i've been playing with john tiller so, uh, so much um what i've found is i've always had some epic moments with them they've they've charged saved the day they've carried on a charge and just been absolutely fantastic and i've got good memories of them i think that's why they're my favorite um by all accounts i should really choose the scots grace as my number one unit but the only reason i didn't um and uh, uh, is because these guys were involved in nearly the whole wars where Scots Greys were just at Waterloo. So yeah, Empress Dragoons, my all-time favourite, some fantastic cavalry. Um, and that's them. And next up is this Chasse à Cheval of the Guard. So that we do have a regular line unit, remember, um, and the Chasse à Cheval. And some of the best-looking, most flamboyant, extravagant uh, cavalry that you could get on the field. Um, these were ever present during the wars of Napoleon. Um, they're not the second most senior they are. And they had a nickname of the Spoilt Brats or sometimes the Immortals. Um, just because they were so cocky. Now remember our regular Chasseur or Chevals. They are sort of unimposing, don't mind doing their job. And when you get into the guard, it seems it goes to your head. And translation of that would be they are full of swagger. They're very cocky. They're very, very confident. Um, they knew they were one of the most senior regiments. They did adopt the hussar uniform, so they um, they looked the part. But in fairness, they had the they you know they were cocky, um, but they did have the skills to back it up. They were absolutely brilliant cavalry. Look at that, a triple star rated. And um, they were well led, um, and they acted as a while for uh, as Napoleon's bodyguard for about half the war. It was up to the chasseurs chevaux to actually guard him. 
Um, and that's what was known as the squadron of the day. The, the squadrons were just sort of taken in turn on a daily basis. Uh, that changed later on, and other guard units got into the mix as well. But for a large portion of the war, uh, Chasseur Chevals acted as Napoleon's personal bodyguard. Um, they had the same equipment as Hussars, probably the better equipment. Certainly they had a better carbine later on. Um, and yeah, these are your cocky, flash, um, full of swagger, um, Chasseur à cheval of the guard. Uh, next up is this elite gendarme, or gendarme d'elite, uh, basically military policemen. However, they would actually have to get involved and act as um, military or cavalry on the day. So they were involved in co um, uh, combat. Uh, a nice looking regiment, quite an imposing figure, I always think. And wear those bear skins, but it did change towards the late war as uniforms got a little bit more scarce and they did appear at Waterloo, in, not in any one uniform. Um, called the Invincibles, sometimes called the Immortals, which is a bit more of a, a sarcastic uh, nickname for them. It wasn't a nickname given to them by the enemy, saying, you know, these are fantastic immortal troops that we've always come up against and never uh, won against. It was given to them by their own men. They didn't shy away from the battle, but it, it never seemed that they were there at the critical moment. Maybe because of numbers, and even maybe because they didn't want to get their uniform dirty. I don't know. But, um, yeah, they're sort of ever-present. Uh, their peacetime role would be as MPs or during sort of a campaign or whilst the main battle wasn't going on they would do all the jobs of an MP but come the day of the battle they would form up with the reserve cavalry with the guard cavalry um, and get involved and we now move on to the Mamelukes sort of a a unique little squadron that there wasn't that many of them and Napoleon pretty much had them only for prestige almost like a mascot he was impressed with them out when he was out in Egypt and defectors from the um, from his enemy had sort of come over to his side, took them to Paris, took them to France, and these guys were sort of slaves that surrendered. Um, Greeks from the Balkans, uh, Egyptians, a couple of Turks and stuff like that. And they were there from the early war, and um, they, they sort of the numbers were never more than about 250. He didn't always use them in battle, although they were involved in Austerlitz, and um, they put down the famous uprising in Spain. Um, they were armed with a very, very curved sabre, and their uniforms were weird, wonderful, and colourful. They never had one sort of set uniform. It was left to them to um, uh, to sort themselves out. Um, but yeah, they're a nice little unique regiment um, or squadron. I, I would say, because you don't have the numbers, just always put them with the guard cavalry. Sometimes they were sort of a mascot, as we said. They stayed close to Napoleon on the day. Um, and yeah, these are your sons of the deserts. The Sons of the Desert, the Mamelukes. So to finish off then, we'll just give a cursory glance, a quick look to some other guard cavalry that appeared at various stages during the war um, that weren't ever present. The ones we've looked at uh, so far have pretty much been there for the entire war, were there in numbers, maybe by the Mamelukes, but um, what you might find, especially in the later war games, are uh, these Eclaireurs, and they appeared in uh, 1814 in the campaign in France, and they were basically scouts. Now, the game has them down as lancers, but from what I understand, half of them were lancers and half of them were not lancers. They were just sort of light cavalry, and they were often attached to other guard, re uh, guard cavalry regiments. So you might see those pop up. As you see, they're not the best rated, but they are lancers, so you just use them as such, as lancers. Um, we had a guard d'honneur, again, a very short-lived regiment uh, or unit, um, and they appear again in late war games. Um, and they did exactly that. They, they sort of dressed as a hussar almost um, and uh, did guard honor or the honor guard type stuff. They, they guarded the um, dignitaries and, and stuff like that. One unit I couldn't find, but you may pop up. I did have a good look for it. Is this guard the ordnance? Again, uh, a short lived unit, um, late war, um, that only appeared for I think about one or two years. Um, I couldn't find them in any game, they, they may crop up, um, and again, they're not the best of the guard cavalry, but you may have them uh, somewhere pop up. Uh, sometimes you appear in a battle and you'll see household staff, or emperor's household, something like that. That was what I was on about, that daily squadron. So initially it was left to the Chasseur Cheval to switch around the squadron every day, um, but then guard cavalry sort of took that role uh, later on. Um, and um, they took it turn about. There, there we've got uh, some 
uh, looks like Shatter or Cheval of the Guard and possibly some Hussars. And yeah, so th they just basically took it in turns uh, to act as Emperor uh, Napoleon's personal bodyguard on the day. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed this Guard Cavalry video. Hopefully it's a little bit clearer that, um, what to do and who these absolutely fantastic cavalry are. Um, stay tuned for the next video. My plan is to do British cavalry. Okay, guys, thanks for watching and happy gaming.